Good afternoon, Little Mead. Welcome to Storytime. We are reading The Twits by Roald Dahl. Now, we have met Mr and Mrs Twit. You can see them there on the front cover. Not very nice people at all. And we've also met the monkeys. That's the muddle wumps. Now, the poor muddle wumps have been made to stand on their head and perform tricks for years and years by the cruel Mr Twit and now they want revenge. So while Mr and Mrs Twit are off buying guns, the monkeys have a plan. This chapter is called The Great Glue Painting Begins. <clears throat> this is the living room, announced Muggle Wump. The grand and glorious living room where those two fearful, frumptious freaks eat bird pie every week for supper. Oh, please don't mention bird pie again, said the roly-poly bird. It gives me the shudders. We mustn't waste time, cried Mugglewump. Hurry up, hurry up. Now the first thing is this. I want everyone to paint stick glue all over the ceiling. Cover it all, smear it in every corner. Over the ceiling, they cried. Why the ceiling? And there they are, going into Mr and Mrs Twit's house, getting ready to play a trick on them for once. Now the other monkeys don't understand what the plan is, but Mr, the Mr Mugglewump, the dad monkey, he knows what he's doing. Oh, never mind why, shouted Mugglewump. Just do as you're told and don't argue. But how do we get up there, they asked. We can't reach. Monkeys can reach anywhere, shouted Mugglewump. He was in a frenzy of excitement now, waving his paintbrush and his bucket and leaping about all over the room. Come on, come on, jump on the table, stand on the chairs, hop on each other's shoulders. Roly-poly can do it flying. Don't just stand there gaping, we have to hurry. Don't you understand that? Those terrible twits will be back any moment and this time they will have guns. Get on with it for heaven's sake, get on with it. And so the great glue painting of the ceiling began. All the other birds who had been sitting on the roof flew in to help, carrying paintbrushes in their claws and beaks. There's Mr Mugglewump, very excited about what he's planning to do. There were buzzards, magpies, rooks, ravens, and many more. Everyone was splashing away like mad, and with so many helpers, the job was soon finished. So they are painting the ceiling with glue. Mm, painting the ceiling. Next chapter is called The Carpet Goes on the Ceiling. What now? they all said, looking at Mugglewump. Aha! cried Mugglewump. Now for the fun. Now for the greatest upside down trick of all time. Are you ready? We're ready, said the monkeys. We're ready, said the birds. Pull out the carpet, shouted Mugglewump. Pull this huge carpet out from under the furniture and stick it on the ceiling. On the ceiling, cried one of the small monkeys. But that's impossible, Dad. <clears throat> I'll stick you on the ceiling if you don't shut up, snapped Mugglewump. He's dotty, they cried. He's balmy, he's batty, he's nutty, he's screwy, he's wacky cried the roly-poly bird. Poor old Muggles has gone off his whoop at last. Oh, do stop shouting such rubbish and give me a hand, said Mugglewump, catching hold of one corner of the carpet. Pull, you nitwits, pull! The carpet was enormous. Here they are listening to Mugglewump's crazy idea of putting the carpet on the ceiling. <clears throat> so 
So the carpet was enormous and it covered the entire floor from wall to wall. It had a red and gold pattern on it. It was not easy to pull an enormous carpet off the floor when the room is full of tables and chairs. Pull! Ye yelled Muggle One. Pull, pull, pull! He was like a demon, hopping around the room and telling everyone what to do. But you couldn't blame him. I mean, after months and months of, of standing on his head with his family, he couldn't wait for the time when the terrible twits would be doing the same thing. At least that's what he hoped. With the monkeys and the birds all pulling and puffing, the carpet was dragged off the floor and finally hoisted up onto the ceiling. And there it stuck. All at once, the whole ceiling of the living room was carpeted in, in red and gold. So here's a picture showing them moving the carpet up onto the ceiling, which they've already painted with glue, so it's going to stick. And you see, the birds are all lifting the carpet up. Let's see what the next plan is. The furniture goes up. Now the table, the big table, shouted Mugglewump. Turn the table upside down and put a dollop of sticky glue onto the bottom of each leg. Then we shall stick that on the ceiling as well. Hoisting the huge table upside down onto the ceiling was not an easy job, but they managed it in the end. Will it stay up there? They cried. Is the glue strong enough to hold it up? It's the strongest glue in the world, Mugglewump replied. It's the special bird-catching, bird-killing glue for smearing on trees. Please, said the roly-poly bird, I have asked you before not to mention that subject. How would you like it if it was monkey pie they made every Wednesday and all your friends had been boiled up and, and I went on talking about it? Oh, I do beg your pardon, said Mugglewap. I'm so excited, I hardly know what I'm saying. Now the chairs. Do the same with the chairs. All the chairs must be stuck upside down to the ceiling. There they are. Taking the chairs up to stick them on the ceiling as well. You see. Okay, so we've got carpet on the ceiling, we've got table, we've got chairs and put them in their right places. Oh, do hurry up, everybody. Any moment now, those two filthy freaks are gonna come rushing in with their guns. The monkeys, with the birds helping them, put glue on the bottom of each chair leg and hoisted them up to the ceiling. Now the smaller tables, shouted Mugglewump, and the big sofa, and the sideboard and the lamps and all the tiny little things, the ashtrays, the ornaments, the beastly plastic gnome on the sideboard, Everything, absolutely everything, must be stuck to the ceiling. It was terribly hard work. It was especially difficult to stick everything onto the ceiling in exactly its right place. But they got it done in the end. What now? asked the roly-poly bird. He was out of breath and so tired he could hardly flap his wings. Now the pictures, cried Mugglewump. Turn all the pictures upside down. And will one of you birds please fly out onto the road and watch to see when those frumptious freaks are coming back. I'll go, said the roly-poly bird. I'll sit on the telephone wires and keep guard. He'll give me a rest. Next chapter. The ravens, big blackbirds swoop over. They had only just finished the job when the roly-poly bird came swooping in screaming, they're coming back, they're coming back. Quickly the birds flew back onto the roof of the house. The monkeys rushed into their cage and stood upside down one on top of the other. A moment later Mr and Mrs Twit came marching into the garden each carrying a fearsome looking gun. I'm glad to see those monkeys are still upside down, said Mr. Twit. Oh, they're too stupid to do anything else, said Mrs. Twit. Hey, look at all those 
cheeky birds still up there on the roof. Let's go inside and load our lovely new guns and then it'll be bang, bang, bang and bird pie for supper. Mr and Mrs Twit returned with their guns. Just as Mr and Mrs Twit were about to enter the house, two black ravens swooped low over their heads. Each bird carried a paintbrush in its claw and each paintbrush was smeared with sticky glue. As the ravens whizzed over, they brushed a streak of sticky glue on the tops of Mr and Mrs Twit's head. They did it with the lightest touch, and even so the Twits felt it. Oh, what was that? cried Mrs Twit. Ah, oh, some beastly bird has dropped his dirty droppings on my head. Oh, mine too, shouted Mr Twit. I felt it, I felt it. Don't touch it cried Mrs Twit. You'll get it all over your hands. Come inside, we'll wash it off at the sink. Ah, oh, those filthy, dirty brutes, yelled Mr Twit. I'll bet they did it on purpose, or I'll just wait till I've loaded up my gun. Mrs Twit got the key from under the doormat, where Muggle, Muggle, Muggle Wump had carefully replaced it, and into the house they went. Now, we know what's gone on inside the house, don't we? Everything is the wrong way up. So they're, they're going to walk in and the ceiling is going to look like the floor. The twits are turned upside down. What's this? gasped Mr Twit as they entered the living room. What happened? screamed Mrs Twit. They stood in the middle of the room, looking up. All the furniture, the big table, the chairs, the sofa, the lamps, the little side tables, the cabinet with bottles of beer in it, the ornaments, the electric fire, the carpet, everything was stuck upside down to the ceiling. You can see Mr and Mrs Twit there, looking up. That would be confusing, wouldn't it? The pictures were upside down and the walls and the floor they were standing on was absolutely bare. What's more, it had been painted white to look like the ceiling. Look, screamed Mrs Twit, that's the floor. Uh, the floor's up there. This is the ceiling. We're standing on the ceiling. <gasps> we're upside down, gasped Mr Twit. We must be upside down. We're all standing on the ceiling looking down at the floor. Oh, help, screamed Mrs Twit. Help, help, I'm beginning to feel giddy. So am I, so am I, cried Mr Twit. I don't like this one little bit. We're upside down and all the blood's going to my head, screamed Mrs Twit. If, if we don't do something quickly, I shall die, I know I will. I've got it, cried Mr Twit. I know what we'll do. We'll stand on our heads. Then, anyway, we'll be the right way up. So they stood on their heads and of course the moment the tops of their heads touched the floor the sticky glue that the ravens had brushed on it a few moments ago did its job. They were stuck. They were pinned down, cemented, glued, fixed to the floorboards. Through a crack in the door the monkeys watched. They jumped right out of their cage the moment the twits had gone inside and the roly-poly bird watched and all the other birds flew in and out to catch a glimpse of the extraordinary sight. I have to stop there because we're out of time. There's only a tiny bit left to read to you tomorrow and then we'll have a new story. Thanks for joining me. Take care. Bye.